YouTube, YouTube, what it do, loved ones? You know the motto, if you can, after the story, go over there and hit us with a like, which is the thumbs up, and that'll let us know we kicking our stuff. Today, we on the edge with BJ, APB, and he finna send us on one. You on, You back on, loved one. Peace and the blessings to everybody out there that's listening, all the supporters that support this podcast. Today I want to tell the story of Mr. Danny Santos, a.k.a. Dito, a.k.a. Danny Bull. I first met Danny back in, I believe, like, 82. We had met at my grandmother's house. We was uh we both was raising birds and uh I had strayed in some of his pigeons and uh the homeboy Chizo came down there, came to my house, Chizo had lived two houses down from me. He came to my house with Danny and the homie Alfredo and uh when he came to my house he had told me that uh, some of his birds had flew into my into my little flock, and uh, I might have strayed them in. So he described the birds to me. I let him in my yard, and uh, out of respect for who I knew who he was, and based on how he came towards me, approached me about the situation, I, I went and got his birds and gave them back to him. Now, me and Chizo had already had a relationship behind uh, just me staying in the neighborhood. He was the type of big homie that always greeted all the kids. If you was out there with the ice cream, everybody ice cream, all the stuff. At the time, I knew who Alfredo was because Alfredo had stayed across from the elementary that I went to. And, uh... I didn't know Danny at the time, so they introduced, did the introduction. From that point on, me and Danny started kicking it, trading pictures with each other and so forth. By the time we got the Vanguard, I was in the eighth grade and Danny was in the seventh. When he came to Vanguard, we started hanging again. This time we became they need friends where we hung out every day together. And we would ditch school and go to Danton House on 121st and hang out. The most memorable thing that I remembered about Danton was Danton was the type of homie. He didn't care what day it was, no matter who he got in the car with his mama, his daddy, grandfather, whatever. He always stayed flamed up. You would never catch him without a red hat. He always had on some type of red coat. If he didn't have on a red coat, he had on the red penalty. In fact, you can find him on the internet on YouTube from a story of when Oprah Winfrey did a story about the gang. She had interviewed him. And he had on the same exact guitar I'm talking about. He had the red hat turned backwards the red penalty, he had the red flag tied around his head. That was always him. He always had on some either some red chucks or either some red house shoes. Most of the time he liked to wear the red house shoes or some black house shoes. The most memorable story about Danny was Danny loved some women. And I remember one time Danny had a a family that stayed out in the old park hood out in Sacramento. And he went up there to visit him, to visit them, I'ma say. And they put him up on all the Bay Area music, all the stuff that was going on up there. The rapper Too Short was out at the time, but he was out down our way. In LA, we didn't know nothing about him. So Bannon memorized his whole tape and came back. And one day we were sitting in Magic Johnson Park getting high, and Danny pulled out this paper and got to acting like he was rapping. And so we asked him, like, you know, what you doing? He was like, no, nah, when I was up there in Sac, I was rapping with my cousin and them, and uh, 
they want me to get my lyrics together so when I go back up there, we can put something on wax. Yeah. You know, like I was up there writing, so me and the homie Harry O actually, you know, don't let us hear something. It was me, Harry O, from Bonnie Hunters, and a little scrap from Bonnie Hunters, and the homie uh, Ron from the hood. We sitting down there, we like, go and put something out there. So he go to rapping that uh, song, Freaky Tales by Too Short. And what made it so believable that it was his rap, because at the time, Dan had a bunch of little girlfriends. So when he got the name and names, some of these girls had the same name of the girls that we done seen over Dan and House. So that made it believable to us that he really wrote his rap. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So every day when we used to go over his house, we used to listen to the homie rap, but all the time, we not knowing at that time that all these raps that he's singing, the E Fody and Too Short and all these raps, we thinking that he really the, the founder of them because we never heard him before. So we cheer, lead him on, we tell him he should get into rapping, you know, all the stuff. Yeah. One day, uh, Dan started taking us in different hoods, he was instrumental in uh, taking us to different girls' house. You know, he used to have us in all type of crib neighborhoods dressed just like he dressed, you know. And uh, I remember he took us over to 5'9 Hoover and we went over to these girls' house on the uh, 60th and Figueroa. That was his uh, his main girlfriend. He ended up falling in love with this girl named Stella. And he took us over to Stella's house and every day we was going over there the Hoovers never gave us no problem, but one day uh, they ended up coming over to the house that we was over, so we were like, yeah, we gotta quit coming over here. Even though they didn't trip on us, we still was like, we gotta quit coming over here. And the most memorable thing that I remember about Danny that had me laughing the hardest was, one day me and Danny had did school and went to the, heart, to the uh, Carson Mall. And we was at the mall, and we up there playing video games, and we see some girls, and then they go to talking to them. When I go over there with him, we over there talking to them. And some dudes from 190 come. They were some OGs, too. They was like, well, we, I'm going to say they was OGs, because they was like, they was already grown. We were still in our teens. And when they came over, they got the cubs and Danny, they didn't say nothing to me. They was like, oh, Danny, like, you know, the dude was like, cause Danny was hollering at his girlfriend. He was like, yeah, me and cubs, what you doing hollering at my girl? And what you moving? And this fool, Danny, tells me, I'm talking about he do something that I never expected. He turned and started acting like he gay. And he tell dude, he said, man, I wasn't hollering at your girlfriend trying to get at her. He said, I was asking about it, too. I seen all your muscles, and uh, I was trying to get your number. And he went to rub the dude on, and the dude jumped back, and his homie started laughing at him. I'm trying to keep from laughing because I know what he's doing. He's trying to distract him so we can get up out of there because we ain't even supposed to be there. They're going to, you know, get on us. So the dude gets so mad, and he's so embarrassed. He was like, cuz, y'all lucky, and he just walk off. Him and his homies walk off. So the girls and his homies laughing so hard, the girl found dead and, you know, funny. So she slid the cashier phone number, told the cashier to get a phone number to Danny, and they walk off. And she tell us, you know, like, get the number from him. And they bone out. And Danny go get the number, I start laughing. I'm like, man, what the hell you was thinking? He like, man, he said, man, you see how big that fool was? He said, fool was going to murder us. He said, I yeah, had to yeah. think of something. And that, that that story right there, I never really got to, you know, I told the homies that we hung with, but I didn't really get to tell the world. You know, the homie was a comedian. He was an outstanding person. And he was, uh, I don't really know what nationality he is. You know, one minute dead in Puerto Rican, one minute he Colombian, one day he Peruvian. I don't know what the hell he was, yeah, man. Yeah, All I yeah. know, he was my homeboy, man. Yeah, he was yeah. my dog, man. And uh, subsequently, man, my boy ended up uh, getting killed, man. And uh, he was the reason I stopped wearing house shoes because before.
before I end up going to Y, I used to always get on him about wearing house shoes, you know, and uh, the homie had just got shot eight times, you know, like six months before he died. You know, he had got shot, shot eight times for the same reason. He was wearing house shoes and some dudes came through and he tried. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You know, slipped and fell, and when he got up, they got on him, hit him, and uh, gave him, gave him a uh, colostomy bag. So when I was in jail, Danny used to write me all the time. You know, him and my homegirl, little mama, my homegirl, Janelle, and my homegirl, Starlene, they all used to take pictures. And, and my homegirl, Shirley, they used to send me pictures and make sure I knew what everybody looked like. If they had babies, let me know their kids and uh I had talked to him on the phone, I believe it was on a Saturday. And uh, he was talking about, you know, when I come home, what we gonna do and this and that. And uh, I called home that next week and uh, they had had the homie funeral, he had got killed. And uh, that right there was the beginning of uh, my uh, 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 outburst. You know, that was the scroll that I kind of broke my back because he was the first person that I actually knew and kicked him every day that got killed. And when he got killed, it done something to me. I was already broken from the abuse and all the other things I had been through in my life. But his murder was the scroll that sent me over to the edge where I didn't care no more whether I lived or died. That's what made me really start like attacking the streets. And uh, I hate that some of my young homies don't get to meet certain homies like Dan, Cyclone, you know what I mean? The homie Melo, the homie Biko, Lady Biko for the future homies that's gonna come. You know, it's a lot of great people in our neighborhood that succumb to this lifestyle. But the most important thing I wanted people to know about Denny was he was a very charismatic person. He always opened his home to make sure we had a place to stay. And my boy loved Al's Market. Every morning, we went to Al's Market and boosted some liquor. That was our must thing we must do every morning. We must go to Al's Market and get some liquor. Whether he went by himself or I went by myself, either way it go, we was gonna get us some 40 ounces and some uh, Thunderbirds. That's what we was gonna do. You know, uh, I hated that he died. And it seemed like his whole family just, you know, all the boys in the family all died to this lifestyle, you know, so rest in peace Alfredo, rest in peace Chino, rest in peace to Dan and then grandfather, Mr. Flacco, who always took care of all of us and gave us a place to stay. And may God bless. We have 60 seconds remaining. May you rest in peace, homie. Love you, homie, and uh, I truly miss you, dog. I think about you every day. I'll never forget you. And that's the story of uh, Mr. Danny Santos. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope I didn't offend nobody by telling that story. If I did, that's on me. Don't take it out of nobody else. You know, I appreciate y'all for listening. Hey, we appreciate you coming on, homie, with On The Edge, BJ, APB. And hitting us with another good one, homie. We we appreciate you and we salute you, loved one.